Is Adam Newman poised to actually leave this company? And, and does the board actually have the ability to make that happen? There's a lot of stuff in play right now. I think Adam Newman probably needs to think about not only what's best for him, but really what's best for the company and, and his other shareholders. And so I, I suspect that in addition to talking to board members, he probably needs to be doing some consultation with his family, with his closest advisors. The, the challenge that Adam faces right now, I suspect, is that like a lot of fallen founders, he's finding himself with not a lot of friends to turn to. It's pretty clear from the news coverage that's coming out that his former employees are starting to reveal things about what's happening inside the company. His biggest supporters seem to be falling by the wayside. And so I, I think there's a real lesson here for founders about the way that they need to comport themselves as they're building their companies. Because when things get rough, you know, you really need friends. And it seems like Adam's friends are falling by the, by the wayside. Michal, we talk a lot about, you know, what this means from an investor standpoint, but I can't help but think this is probably really weighing on employees and for folks that work in the company and work with the company as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there are some parallels here to the Uber situation and kind of the, the downfall of Travis Kalanick. And um, clearly that had a big impact on employees at the time that that was going on at Uber. Um, this is one of the, the kind of you know, messy byproducts of having these visionary founders. Yes, they're able to, you know, harness all this energy and, and this momentum for their companies, um, including among their employee base. But when they fall and, and when things start to pile up and you kind of see through the cracks, um, I think there is also just a, a lot of fallout with the employee base. So we're definitely starting to see that. One of the interesting things, I think, by the way, is figuring out how much of this is an Adam Newman problem and how much of this is a WeWork business model problem. Stephanie, I might argue that this is SoftBank's chickens coming home to roost because they encouraged crazy founders with outlandish ideas and trying to grow like gangbusters at all costs in this era. We're seeing it at WeWork. We saw it at Uber. And there's a sense that this, this concept is hitting a wall of some sort. I don't see how this plays out in a way that's great for the likes of SoftBank either way. If you replace Newman, don't you sort of stick a shiv in your growth story in a way? And then if you don't, then you end up going public and you have to mark down your investment, right? Yeah. I mean, I think all of these things are happening. And certainly, every single portfolio company in the Vision Fund portfolio that follows this pattern of the visionary founder. These are all going to get scrutinized pretty heavily. I mean, there are companies in that SoftBank Vision portfolio that, that don't follow this pattern. I look, I think of an, an arm, for example. I mean, that is not a company. That, it is tied to Masa's vision, but that's a very different company than an Uber or a WeWork. And, and so, it was already public. And it was already public. Yeah. Uh, NVIDIA is another one of their investments. And so, you know, to be fair, SoftBank Vision Fund has made some investments that feel a little bit more run of the mill. But you're absolutely right, John. There is going to be an assessment of the founder visionary investment that, that SoftBank has made. And, and I think everyone, including people at, at, at Fast Company, will be going through every single one of those portfolio companies and, and starting to look well, at I'm, where the, they're there. I'm is. looking at the list right now. Uber's by far the vision's largest, followed by Arm and NVIDIA. But DoorDash and SoFi and Slack, I mean, they're they're not all founder stories, that's for sure. No, and then, you know, I mean, Stuart Butterfield is the absolute corollary or, or opposite to, to an Adam Newman story or to a Travis Kalanick story. I mean, you know, I, 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 I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here, but I think that, you know, someone like Stuart Butterfield has comported himself in a way that is both visionary and businesslike, and there's proof that you can be both.